Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to talk about trust, okay? I see a lot of people saying, I can't trust after being in a narcissistic relationship, which is understandable. You're going to have a hard time trusting the next guy or girl that comes into your life because you're going to think that everything that comes out of their mouth is a liar, okay? But see, here's the thing, all right? And we have a lot of people in today's society that are walking around and have no trust, okay? Narcissists don't trust. And I had some guy, you know, say on one of the posts, well, if I don't trust, does that necessarily make me a narcissist? I'm not a narcissist and I don't trust. No, it doesn't make you a narcissist, okay? Because with a narcissist, they have no empathy. They don't care who they hurt along the way, as long as they meet their needs, meet their benefits. So it's a completely different thing. You're not trusting because you've been hurt, but you're not looking to hurt somebody in the future to get some kind of supply. So that's the difference between you having no trust and a narcissist having no trust and differentiating you from being a narcissist. Now, I want to bring up this issue of trust, okay? Here's the thing, you guys. Yes, there are a lot of slimy people out there. And for you not to realize that, then you have to be either very young or very naive. But if you've lived a lo- enough life like I have, okay, and you've been, you know, you've seen a lot in your life, you're going to realize that there's a lot of people you can't trust out there. And especially, especially on a dating app, because 80 to 90% of those people on a dating app are already in relationships. They're married or they have a, a, a relationship going on or they're in a situationship and they're out creeping on the dating apps. Okay. So dating apps are not a good resource to finding authentic, sincere people. It's like winning lotto to find somebody on a dating app today because they've been abused. They're abused by these scammers and these narcissists looking to use you for something, money, sex, a place to live, or just breadcrumb you for an ego trip, okay? So how are you going to trust? I'm going to tell you how you trust. There's a couple different checks that you have to look for along the way. Number one. When you meet somebody, the very first thing you have to do is look into their background. Like I had some guy say on a post, I'm going to have to do an FBI check on every single person I go out with because I don't trust them anymore. Well, let me just tell you something. Even if you did an FBI check on somebody, that's still not going to tell you everything about that person. That might tell you if they have a criminal record or not, which is very important. You should want to know that. But... You've got to look into, number one, this person's family. I can't say this enough, all right? I can't fucking say this enough. And this is so true. And this was told to me when I was young, and I never, like, I never thought much of it. And believe me, when I look back on my prior relationship and everything like that, I wish I looked at my ex's family. Because if I did, I would have seen the toxic family that they came from. I would have seen the toxic mother-in-law that I dealt with that had a hold on her son and laid guilt trips on her son. So this is what I'm telling you. When you are dealing with somebody and you want to trust them, number one, you want to look at their family. You know, did they come from a loving family? Now, not everybody that doesn't come from a loving family is toxic, okay? Okay. It depends on, you know, how enlightened they are in realizing that their family is toxic, that they can, you know, internalize everything and say, you know what, I did come from a toxic family, but you know what, I don't want to be like that. But it gives you insight into somebody, all right? And I had just coached somebody with regard to this. She was dealing with a narcissist and, you know, he had a bad background. He had a a mother that abandoned him 
And then he had a stepmother that he hated. So he had this bad fixation. He hated women and everything like that. And now she gets involved with him. And he made comments about how, you know, oh, this women are only good for this or good for that. So this is what's in this person's mind. Where do you think you're going to have a normal relationship with somebody like that? You are not. Okay, you're dealing with somebody who already has a preconceived notion of how women are. Okay, so they're jaded and you're not going to be able to have that person ever trust you and you're not going to ever be able to trust them. Because here's the thing, if if you're with somebody and they can't trust you, you are never going to trust them because they're going to be doing shady shit on the side if they're a narcissist because they don't trust you or they're not going to open up to you like covert narcissists and they're always going to have a wall up and they're, you know, you're never going to have any intimacy with them because they don't trust you. So how are you going to trust somebody? Okay. I'm going to tell you, You've got number one rule. You've got to move slowly with it and you've got to pick up on those red flags. All right. You never let anybody rush you in a relationship. Never. Okay. It, it, it takes at least six months longer. It takes years. And sometimes people are married 20 years and still don't know that person. But you've got to sharpen your senses to size somebody up and size up whether you can trust this person. Okay. Okay. And the way you're going to know whether you could trust somebody is whether they follow up. They say what they, they do what they say. In other words, they don't make false promises. Covert narcissists do this all the time. They promise to take you on trips. They promise to marry you. They promise they'll always be there for you. They promise they won't ghost you. And in the end, they fail. Okay. In the end, they're unreliable and they're full of shit, okay? Because their actions are not matching up to their words. So how are you going to know that you could trust someone? Their actions have to match their words, okay? It's got to be consistent. Now, the key is, you guys, now listen good. The key is it's not only going to be consistent in the first three months, it's got to be past six months of consistency. Now, when you see that this person fucks up, okay, if they ghost you any which way, you have got to get rid of them. That is a sign, an indirect sign of disrespect. They have no respect for you. And especially in today's day of technology, there is absolutely no reason why somebody should ghost you. Because I'll tell you one thing. I can guarantee they never ghost their boss, all right? And why is that? Because they want their fucking paycheck. So why are you going to let somebody treat you like that? If you let somebody treat you like that, they're going to keep treating you like that. They're going to think you're a jerk and they're going to cheat on you and do what they want and string you along and worst of all, waste your fucking time, okay? So get rid of anybody that does anything like that, okay? But now... We're focusing in on trust. We're watching the actions. We're watching the pattern of behavior. Now, very important, you guys, besides looking into the family, you've got to look and see if this person knows how to love. A lot of these narcissists do not know how to love because they have never been loved. They have never been validated as a child. So they don't know how to give it. Okay. Or they're bitter about life or something and they feel like they don't have to kiss your ass. So the bottom line is you want somebody who can be vulnerable. Okay. And that is so important. And I'll tell you why, because somebody can't love you unless number one, and this is a big one, they respect you. And number two, they could be vulnerable to you. They can completely open up to you and tell you, you know, their innermost secrets and feel comfortable with you. And what is necessary for somebody to feel vulnerable with you? They've got to be able to trust you. That is the key, you guys, the key. So you need somebody who is not jaded, you know, who has an open mind, who's willing to give of themselves and take a chance with you and trust in you. Now, on your end of things, you also 
have to be a transparent person in order to earn the other person's trust. But with that transparency does not mean that you have to divulge your innermost secrets to that person right away, okay? Trust is earned over a period of time. So as time goes by, and I'm not talking one, two weeks like everybody does. They think somebody's terrific because they're consistent two weeks and they tell them every single, you know, little secret under the sun. No, okay? You don't tell, open up to somebody that quickly. You've got to see them at least six months and, and sh they've got to show you that they are consistent, they are reliable, they are, you know, speaking the truth. There is no confusion. There is no word salad. There is no gaslighting. You know, there. this person is a straight fucking shooter, okay? And that's what you want. You want a straight shooter because if you get in a serious relationship with somebody and you have serious issues like money issues, health issues, issues with children, the last thing that you fucking want is a gaslighter or somebody that you can't connect with or you can't work to resolve conflict with because you're going to be miserable. You're going to be arguing. The person's going to give you the silent treatment. They're going to walk out on you when you say something they don't like because they don't want to resolve conflict. And this is something that you got to understand when you're dealing with a narcissist. They don't care about resolving conflict. They see it one way, their way, and that's it, okay? They're not about compromise. And now this brings me to my next point on how do you trust somebody. Part of trusting somebody is being with somebody who's able to compromise, give a little bit, able to, you know, sacrifice in order to make something work, okay? And why are they sacrificing? Because they're trying to make it work with you, okay? And that's something that a narcissist will never do. They're not going to compromise themselves for you. They're going to live the way according to how they want to live. And if you don't like it, there's the fucking door. They'll replace you. That's how a narcissist mind works, you guys. Because to a narcissist, you are replaceable. That's why you never want to get involved with these narcissists. Because you are replaceable to a narcissist. It's a transactional, a tra how do you say, a transactional relationship, okay? Now, a lot of people say, well, all relationships are like that. No, they're not, okay? Yeah, a lot are, but, you know, you want somebody to care about you for the inner you of who you are as a person, the fact that you are a giving person, you have heart, you'll go out of your way for somebody, you'll put yourself out for that person, okay? That other person's got to be willing to do the same, so in order to trust somebody, these are all the things that you should be looking for. Now, I know it's not easy to find, okay? We live in a self-absorbed society, okay? And, you know, if you follow things that were written in the Bible in Timothy, it says, man becomes lover of themselves, all right? And people have asked me, are we in those times, all right? You're going to have to make your own assessment on that. But what I'm going to tell you is this. The bottom line is you have a lot of broken, damaged people out there that don't trust, okay? So there are people that are good people, but it's a weed out. It's a weed out. And the best way to meet somebody that could be authentic is in, in an organic type of setting. Now, what does that mean? That means in person. And this is what makes it so difficult today because we are, you know, a society that is based online today and we're not having those human interactions. And this is why people are so lonely today. Even if they're in relationships, people are lonely. There's a lot of loneliness going on because people are more on their phone, more on the computer than they are having human interactions with each other. And that's, you guys, that is so important. And I saw that during the pandemic with my kids when they were not in school. They were, it, it was bad, okay? And they needed that human interaction, okay, for your mental health. 
So my point is you want to try to meet people organically. Go to a dog park. Go on hikes. Join a business group. Join a tech group. Go go on trips. Go to coffee shops. A gym. You may meet a lot of narcissists in a gym, but you could try the gym. You could try a library. There's a lot of different ways to meet people organically and meet people in a music class, an art class, a pottery class. You know, school is a great way to meet people by taking a class because you're meeting them organically. They don't have the mask on on the on the dating app like, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, gorgeous that. No, you're meeting somebody. You're seeing them face to face. And, you know, there's not that pressure of, you know, trying to win somebody over. You have a common interest together. So you take it slow and you build these friendships and you try to see, you know, Who's reliable and who's not? The ones that are reliable are the ones that you you see if you could trust them down the road. The ones that show you any kind of shady shit, okay? Like they tell you they're going to call you and then they don't call you. Or they make promises to get together with you on the weekend and then they disappear or they keep giving you excuses. Those are the people, delete, block, goodbye. Delete, block, goodbye. It's a weed out. You got to weed out all the nonsense and bullshit out of your life, okay? If you spend time with people like that, you're going to go nowhere because they're going to breadcrumb you and keep you around for their, you know, when they feel like getting together with you and waste your time, okay? Time is important because let me tell you something. It doesn't get easier when you get older, The whole dating pool gets smaller as you get older. And you're also dealing with a dating pool of a lot of damaged people that have come out of bad relationships and bad marriages. And they're having a hard time trusting or they got a chip on their shoulder or they don't want to compromise themselves or they're going to find fault in you or they're not going to put up with anybody else's bullshit. So my point is this. Your time is valuable. So don't waste it with anybody that shows you one ounce of shady shit, okay? That they're unreliable or they don't respect your time, okay? That's it. You you got to be no nonsense about this, you guys, because you want, you know, you want to end up being, you know, hopefully meeting somebody. And if you don't, that's okay, too. You fill your life with other things. But if you're looking for companionship or something, You've got to leave yourself open for the right people. And as long as you're entertaining these narcs or these BS bullshitters, you're going to be wasting your time. All right. And then what are you going to be five, 10 years older and then starting over again because this person wasn't sincere? No, you cut it off at the chase. Okay. And go back and listen to my podcast. Your cutoff game's got to be fierce. All right. Because I talk about this. So. Yes, you'll be able to trust, but you've got to be very, very careful how you move. You've got to move extremely slow. You've also got to show that person courtesy and respect as well, okay? If you want somebody to respect you, you've got to respect them too, all right? So you've got to introspect and look at yourself as well, and you've got to give this person respect. And if they're not reciprocating, goodbye, good luck, out the door, okay? But... You know, there are good people that are looking for other good people. And I see them on my social media, okay? There's a lot of nice, good people that are on there. And I've got a few narcs on there, too, (laughs) that are playing the victim. But there's good people on there that are sincerely trying to meet other good people. So, you know, take your time. Don't move fast. Don't believe anything if it sounds too good to be true because they're probably fake, okay? Look at the timing of when somebody tells you something. If somebody's telling you they love you in the first month, you know that they are full of shit or they're really naive and dumb, okay? In either case, you don't want to be bothered with that nonsense, okay? So that's the best I could do, you guys. You know, you got to work with what you got out there in this world. Take it slow Look for the red flags, weed out, and, you know, stay with the people that are reliable and dependable and that have a good heart and show you empathy, all right? I hope that helps you. If it did, 
please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to share the podcast. Have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that the Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp123 and also on Instagram the game exp123 okay and have a great day mm-hmm.